in the chat we got about that hi everyone this is chicho welcome to my channel and welcome to the live stream today is february 5th 2020 and we're doing our second math live stream drop and tutoring session for 2020 and we've done a few of these uh, in 2019 I'm not sure if we did any for 2018 we might have uh, I've sort of been live streaming for about a couple of years now uh, so basically I'm making myself available for a couple hours to answer questions uh, for anyone um, that uh, is basically taking high school mathematics but we do a little bit of elementary we do a little bit of uh, post-secondary um, but mainly focus on high school mathematics okay and uh, we do these once every couple of weeks uh two to three times a month basically um and we sort of just chill until people show up and um, it is an open discussion so we do talk about other things as well um <laughs> mainly try to focus on sciences uh and maybe economics and and whatnot uh we don't talk about politics and much too much right void how are you doing let's go yeah mathematics looking forward to this i've been uh, in full-on math mode uh, in january just all of a sudden math just kicked into high gear for me with a lot of students and stuff requiring a lot of help for some reason this january has been the most intense january that i can recall anyway let me show you while we wait for some people by the way if you have any math questions drop drop them and We'll start dealing with them and if we're talking about anything else we'll stop when we do mathematics was just watching 10 by 10 video on youtube nice night 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 oh so we actually haven't done a 10 by 10 game for a while so uh i think it's about time uh we did one of those as well uh hello i love spider-man how are you doing hope life is well you guys uh you're here you were here yesterday too right at the end actually if i remember correctly or was it you that was right at the end i think so i love spider-man uh, did you go to a comic store a comic store today dante how's it going brother liquor stream went <laughs> void i don't know right now i'm not feeling the best i'm still recouping from uh what do you call it the flu i got earlier in uh in january at the beginning of january really right so i'm not even sampling <laughs> the liqueurs right uh liquor stream probably spring summer when we start getting some fresh berries and stuff we'll do for sure spencer iceman how are you doing hey hope you're doing well chicho doing very well thank you they're literally cooking the books and i oh, dante we knew this right we talked about this and dante by the way since you brought it up look into who the biggest funder was for that app i remember there was a discussion on soros that came up during a political talk like last month or a couple of months ago uh, he was the biggest funder for the app they used in iowa <laughs> like how hard is it to do a little bit of mathematics and tally up the votes really this is how how <laughs> how illiterate our societies have become in the language of mathematics where our education system has deprived people of the ability just to count tally votes that they need a complicated app that most likely is proprietary right funded by special interest groups to count the votes and then at the end they flip coin like the way they were flipping coins <laughs> if any mathematician any gambler anyone that plays games of chance if anyone flipped a coin the way they were flipping coins they throw them out of the house right that's not a random toss flip that's a oh i want heads i got heads i want tails i got tails it's just simple mathematics if our society our education system was teaching people mathematics these kinds of shenanigans would never occur never occur which is why we're doing these live streams right while we're focusing on mathematics math rules our world right both in terms of those that understand it and those that do not okay 
theater guy. Dante, I feel you, brother. I feel you. But I'm not shocked. I wasn't expecting anything else from the from the DNC or the political system. I said from the get-go from 2016 when the rug was pulled under uh, from under Sanders's feet, he should have split. Right? Hi ho Chicho theater guy how are you doing by the way where does the name chicho come from it's a nickname spencer that's a nickname that i had in the 90s and the two nicknames and i put them together and i've been going by chicho since the late 90s online playing online games that's chicho <laughs> great lasagna how are you doing hey chicho long time no see brother. long time brother long time glad you could make it hunk mitt hello hello how are you doing f how's life brother how are you hope florida's warm it's chilly here that's why i got my my cozy sweater on same as yesterday cozy cozy All right night night the other day i was working on an engine and I had to do some torque spec conversion definitely hurt my brain for a second and felt illiterate <laughs> yeah I'm working on mechanical stuff and some of these mechanical machines are like the machines and the cars and stuff they're very specialized so you have to know what is going on to be able to do the conversions x how's life i hope he learned his lesson and absolutely destroys the democratic party this time around dante i'm with you but man if they did that to me if i was just straight up if i was playing games of chance like may it be just regular card games for no money or was gambling if anybody pulled that crap man <laughs> what lurky it's easier to lur uh, lurky ah okay cool where how do you s lurky it's easier to pronounce thank I, I can't even connect the lurky lurky welcome to our stream beans how's it going so from a kg to pound night night kilograms to pounds is that what you were doing with torx no is that the conversion torx spec conversion pounds of pressure what the the one car that uh, we used to have as a family relative had it was an rx7 that had a torque engine that thing was powerful what a kick right i joined yesterday and it is lurky because i lurk a lot ah okay okay lurky I'm glad you joined. I'm glad you're back for a second day. Different type of stream, I guess. We're doing mathematics. Pounds to kilometers? It can't be pounds to kilometers, is it? Night, night? It must be pounds to kilograms. Pounds doesn't go to kilometers. Pounds is weight. Kilometers is distance. Nope. Kilograms. Kilograms. It's got to be kilograms. You have to convert to the same type of unit that might be the problem why it was hurting your brain that sounds more like ratio then yeah eagle units freedom units eagle units to freedom units <laughs> foot pounds to kilometer kilograms on a japanese motor what that's cool oh i guess so foot pounds to kilometers kilogram do you do should we do the conversion this is like by the way this is the way you could do the conversion brain cannot comprehend it. watch this let's say you want to convert from feet pounds right feet pounds and the way i do it if there's a conversion like this you write out your original conversion sorry not kilometers not kilometers Oh, okay so the top what you wrote down is correct because feet is distance pounds is weight and you're converting to distance over weight so that works find the uh, linearization of function <laughs> point I have I don't know what linearization means I think you're talking about the tangent right uh, beef is are you talking about the tangent because the terminology changes from different parts of the world in my part of the world if there's a function like this and if you're trying to find the i guess linear function at a point four two 
this is the point four two you would be looking at the tangent line right i'm not sure if i could do that i, I'm, I don't do uh, i'm not doing calculus right now right but if you're doing unit conversion you want to go from foot pounds to let's draw this and we take it out kilogram uh kilometers per kilogram right if that's the unit conversion you want to do hmm, that looks like a sine wave is it a sine wave one plus four x it's a uh, it's logarithmic x y i definitely don't know how to uh, do the uh, take the derivative of that uh, the calculus that's beyond me right now right so if you want to do this what you want to do basically <coughs> I'm just gonna ban this guy. <laughs> Dull. Oh my god, I can't even highlight these things properly. Boop. 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 Did I get it? It's tangent. It is a tangent. Brother, you're out. <laughs> like at least at least come and chill a bit before you drop drop bombs right alternate current makes a sine wave on a oscilloscope okay yeah it's tangent planes yeah it's tangent planes so if you want to convert to that from this to this you want to take the feet and convert them to kilometers right so the question is you want to get rid of feet how do you get rid of feet you get rid of feet by putting feet here now can we go straight from feet to kilometers usually not usually you convert feet to i mean i could do it multi-step but there's got to be a conversion from feet to meters right that would be a natural conversion ah yes squiggly line uh can you guys stop math flexing i feel stupid now <laughs> uh, me too i don't know how to do that night night <laughs> like <laughs> it's beyond my math right so if we want to convert this the feet is going to kill the feet, but what are we going to convert the feet into? So you write it as ratios, right? Now, I can go by memory. Uh, pounds, I can't go by memory uh, into grams. I don't know what that is. I would have to look it up, right? If you guys know uh, feet goes into 12 inches, and I know what inches is into centimeters, and then centimeters we could go to meters, and then meters we could go to kilometers. That's a long-ass way of doing it. But one feet equals 0 0.3048 meters. Perfect. Thank you, Beans. So one foot is equal to 0 0.3. Yeah, the 2.54 I remember by, uh, by memory for some reason. 3048. 3048. Here, let me erase this. Make, make some room for us. So this is 0 0.3048 meters. So we're converting feet to meters right now because the feet kill the feet. So we're in meters, but we don't want meters. We want kilometers up top, right? Say so I have to look up the meters though. Yeah, the meters I never remember. So we want to convert meters to kilometers. So that's a straight conversion. We could put meters here and we could put kilometers here. You can just put the units and then look up the conversion, but meters and kilometers are easy. One kilometer, is 1000 meters right here we'll put thousand meters so meters kills meters now we have kilometers up top and we've got kilometers up top perfect right now we're going to convert pounds to kilograms i don't know what the conversion is for pounds to kilograms should i like write this a little cleaner here we'll make a little bit of more room feet over pounds oops that's not a one that's just pounds pounds times 0 0.3048 meters over feet and then feet kills feet and then we're going to go meters down here kilometers up here one kilometer equals 1000 meters right now we've got to get rid of pounds pounds what are we going to convert pounds into what's a good conversion to pounds one pound equals oh that's easy zero point four five so zero point we we'll go straight to kilom, uh, kilograms right three five nine two three five nine two kilograms so pounds kills pounds we got kilometers 
over kilograms, which is exactly what we needed. So all we've got to do now is do whatever is being told us to do here, right? Math is like push-ups. The more you do, the better you get. Yeah, 100%, right? So in the top, we're going to have 0 0.3048. Oh, yeah, this meters killed this meters too, right? Kilometers over... 1,000 times that, you just move the decimal place three over. So 453.592 kilograms, whatever that ends up being, right? And by the way, this is feet per kilogram per pound. We would assume this is one, right? But whatever number you had here, whatever your X was, your X would be here, right? So this X feet, pounds would be equal to x kilogram kilometer kilograms that's a weird unit i don't think i've uh, i've ever done kilometer kilograms before i i don't remember i must have done it during university times where we're doing calculations but this unit is not familiar to me i've never really used it in doing geophysics or anything uh, we must have done it at university, but I never dealt with it again uh, in my work, right? Where and when would you use kilogram? I'm interested. Uh, from the sounds of it, they're using it. Night-night uh, was using it for uh, for an engine for torque torque conversion to calculate the... Where's his comment? Uh, the other day, I was working on an engine and I had to do some torque spec conversion. So torque spec conversion, kilometers per kilogram, I don't know. Like, I can't wrap my head around it. Kilometers per kilogram, I don't know. I don't know. I would have to look it up to see where it's used. Ohm's law is where I learned my math. Ohm's law, yeah. I didn't use uh, kilometers per kilogram. I'm misstating the units. Oh, are you misstating units? <laughs> so this might not exist. We don't know what this is. This is this is the the answer to the unified field theory, kilometers per kilogram, right? I'm so used to them, good old red-blooded freedom units, <laughs> freedom units, freedom fries, right? Let's kill this guy. But any conversion you can do this way, right? Any conversion. And unit conversion is ridiculously powerful. The answer for every question is 42. I thought it was 420. It's freedom units miles. I don't think so. I think he's uh, he's being funny. Freedom units is kilometers. Freedom units is kilometers. I don't know what freedom units are. Freedom units, and we could go into the political realm on that one, right? We could go anywhere with that one. <clears throat> Sorry, an eagle unit, it's uh, miles, right? An eagle unit is miles? <laughs> I don't know. I've never heard those. The only place I heard freedom units would be freedom fries, right? sorry i was trying to tell you that i was not sure what the unit i was converting from oh you didn't know what the unit it was converting from but was it kilometers over kilograms the final units you had freedom units are all units that are not u.s units oh so metric uh, or si units uh, the international units because i do not understand <laughs> Is X, if X is the measure of an unknown entity, then isn't everything bound to the laws of time and relativity? If X is the measure of an unknown entity, then isn't everything bound to the laws of time and relativity? That sounds like a rap ry uh, rhyme, right? Lyris. Are you a lyric lyricist? Lyr we know if x is the measure of an unknown um, 
entity then isn't everything bound to the laws of time and relativity everything no matter what is bound that we know of in the material world is bound to the laws of time and relativity for sure that's an opinion <coughs> US units are eagle units yeah I was joking <laughs> I needed to convert the uh, unit to feet per pound ended up using a chart in an obscure manual you found on a forum wow I know that's neat too fun yeah there's so many charts that just like I know for nursing there's conversions that a lot of in the medical industry there's a lot of unit conversions they have to do is just punch in the formulas and they get something out right it becomes automatic but if someone does the miscalculation there's serious repercussions like a lot of uh, there's a tremendous number of deaths and harm done in hospitals with people doing a mistake in their calculations and giving the wrong dosage to a patient right like we're talking into the hundreds of thousands right in the United States anyway I've looked at those numbers so there is uh, and those are just the deaths just imagine how many emergency I forget what the light code is that they announce in the hospital is for giving the wrong dosage to someone right it's uh, it could be serious ultimately I was just trying to tighten a bolt to the right torque spec <laughs> it was a lot of effort for just a couple of bolts but I guess it's important it is important yeah torques there's a tremendous amount of kick to and torque engines that's that's what gives them the power right like I don't know if any of you guys have ever driven a car that's a torque engine um, I don't know I don't even know who makes torque engines anymore uh, but back in the day in the 1980s and 90s there was a car that the Mazda made it was an RX-7 and it was a big engine heavy engine really heavy engine and when you put your foot on the gas the whole car you could feel it go Goo! like there was a Doo! torque to it right and it was a solid engine and it was a really good car it was a sports car low and I actually here you know, I'll tell you a story I actually hit a deer going at 120 kilometers per hour 120 130 kilometers per hour on the highway with an rx7 with a torque engine right in 1988 I believe 88 90 right we were lucky I was driving there was a passenger and by the way here's a recommendation or advice if you're driving if you see one deer keep your eyes on the road and slow down because deer travel in packs so if you're driving you see one deer slow down not you know don't slam on the brakes because there could be cars behind you you don't want to get rear-ended but slow down put on your blinkers right slow down and pay attention because deer travel in packs what happened with us was we were driving and the sun was coming down so the, and deer they move during sunrise and sunset dawn and dusk there's a lot of movement right so be careful during those periods more than anything well be careful all the time but pay special attention during those periods so the sun was we're going through trees so there was like dark shadow light dark shadow light and we saw three deer on the side I looked over and then I looked ahead and there was a gigantic deer in front of us right going at 120 130 clicks an hour hit the deer the deer flew up its head hit the roof we know because we, I heard it and it indented the roof right the deer took a flying flip flew like I don't know how far right we were lucky because the rx7 is low right it was a sports car if this if we we're driving a car that was higher the deer would have gone through the windshield and that's one of the times where animals if you hit hit them on the people that hit animals on the highway the animals fly through the window and usually end up hurting people badly or killing them right so we were lucky we're driving a small car 
going fast enough that hit the deer flew up and by the time he was coming down we we're already under it right went off the highway came back and the deer was like across the median on the other side and he was struggling to get up and uh, actually no 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 my mistake he was struggling to get up because i stopped looked the deer was already on the side he was struggling to get up we kept on driving came back on the way back the deer was already dead right went to the small town filed a report with the police and i was on my way check this out from vancouver to toronto right across canada so i only got to hope if you know that distance it's like a couple of hours of driving two or three hours of driving and we went back and parked the car because we couldn't even lift up the hood there was damage inside we we're lucky to get home and the next day the car was dead we had to tow it to the um what do you call it the mechanics to get it fixed right. this is a fun one if you have two thousand debt to a credit card how much interest do you pay a day if you um if your arp interest uh is 15 percent, are you paying 15 percent cumulated daily i guess we can figure that one out just recently there was a guy in my area who hit a deer and it went through the windshield and killed him yeah and that's the that's the main injury that people get deer answer is 82 cents if i'm right let's check it out so you got two thousand dollars of debt and 15 percent interest right arp um i don't know what arp is uh arp and you're you are i guess that's supposed to be r where's p p r maybe um, i'm assuming that's going to be credit cards you're paying 15 percent on credit cards that's on the cheap side i know people who are paying like 28 percent on the credit card annual interest is oh, okay annual interest here. so annually that's cheap as well right a lot of credit cards are daily or monthly at least right so let's assume it's annual okay i always use the formula this formula um, da, 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 da. a is equal to p1 plus r over n and t where this is the principle principle what you start with start with what you end with end with uh, this is the r is the rate of interest that's that guy t is your time in years and n is the compounding period compound and this is time okay compounding period for us is one we're going to do um, one a year lurker so it is true 82 cents if i'm right okay 82 cents let's check it out um <coughs> what should we do i mean you could just figure out what 15 percent is you don't even need this formula right you could just go 15 times that i think so anyway so 15 times a thousand is 150 multiplied by two so it's 300 dollars interest i think so 300 dollars 300 dollars interest right now you're paying in one year divide that by 365 don't even need that formula right let's check it out yeah that's what it is <laughs> we don't even need this formula i always use this formula write it down and then look at the question and go no no we don't need this formula we can just do it this right i divide a point by this times the principal balance yeah all right so 300 divided by 365 let's make sure that's correct 300 duk, 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 divided by 365 and right now we're in a leap year so it should be 366 so 82 cents and yeah 82 cents 82.19 cents per day you're paying interest right what you could do as well is figure out what it would be if you were compounding so 82.19 right so the answer was 0 0.8219 cents let's figure out how much interest you would pay at the end of the year if you were compounding daily right because usually if you don't pay off your balance at the end of the end of the month with a credit card they charge interest on your total balance uh, all of it i believe 
uh, for that month right so and I believe they're doing it daily so this would be n would be 365 so let's figure out how much total uh, you would have if you were doing this so you would go a is equal to 2000 1 plus uh, 0 0.15 over 365 to the power of 365 times 1 one year right so what would that be let's just do this uh, point one five divided by 365 is that plus one is that to the power of 365 to the power of 365 is that times 2000 boop, is that so your total you would owe them if you're compounding daily is da -da -da -da, three oops not three two two thousand three hundred and twenty three dollars and fifty uh, sixty cents right we'll round up to the decimal places so sixty cents right that's two thousand by the way two thousand three hundred that so subtract these guys that minus that is three hundred twenty three dollars and sixty cents right we figured out this one was three hundred dollars you would pay if you're compounding yearly so if you divide this by 365 right minus 2000 divided by 365 you'd be paying 88 so you'd be paying if it was being compounded daily 0 0.8866 cents per day right so you're paying six uh, 6.7 cents more per day if it was going to be compounded daily right big difference the banks make a gaz billions of dollars by changing the terms of interest payments from yearly to daily right if the balance changes every month you would have to calculate out each month yeah you would have to calculate out each month of course we're going on the simplistic realm saying that okay you're not paying anything right because the principal balance changes every month so the debt increases yeah gonna head out chicho okay night night have a great day see you chat Hope you have a fantastic day and if you can make it tomorrow coronavirus and we're going to do mathematics by the way again i've got some charts table set up i got to clean up the table a little bit i'll try to get it as clean up as possible for tomorrow night's stream but we're going to look at uh, some data uh, because in the last math stream we did we talked about the exponential growth of the coronavirus uh, at the beginning stages anyway that was like last week or i guess it was like 10 days ago right tomorrow night 8 30 p.m right we're going to do 8 30 p.m and we're not going to be here we're not going to use the board i might i've i'm going to have images popping up okay um, i might bring like a tab and do a little math but i don't think so i think i just want to present some of the data 8 30 p.m pacific time yeah yeah my time west coast canada united states so i know it's not going to work out for some people um, especially uh, some of the people in Europe because they're eight nine hours ahead so that puts them like four or five o'clock in the morning right that's early in the morning to look at the mathematics of the coronavirus uh, a little bit too early possibly right uh, so but we'll have it up at some point as well right within a few days I'm six eight hours ahead yeah so that's going to put you like 2 30 4 30 a.m yikes that's already should i show you the snacks that i brought check this out i got some cuckoo and avocados and cuckoos i made this i made like three days two days ago so this is the third day we're eating them it's fantastic right. have we got videos out on this how to make this Eat your greens. 
5.30 for Europe, 4.30 for UK, and some others. I'm originally from Iran, yeah. I was born there, Lar Larwinio, Larwinio. No worries, I'm just about getting used to the time difference here in UK. My old flatmate has just moved to Victoria. Victoria, Canada, BC, where I am? That's cool. From the UK to Victoria, oof. What a diff, what a diff. Actually, not that big of a, ah, no, big diff. But uh, there's a lot of UK influence here, right? I also have some tea, um, what do you call it, halva. A little bit of sweet, need a little bit of sugar kick as well. This is good. And I got some ginger mask of raven. How are you doing? Ginger black tea, ginger with honey. That's why it's murky. It's nice here, man. It's very chill. It's very chill here. West coast of Canada is on the down low to a certain degree, except Vancouver. Vancouver has gone crazy just with the influx of money and stuff going around and whatnot uh, it's become sort of a transient city tourist city so it's changed a lot but we'll see how long that lasts but it's a nice place to be lots of nature amazing nature mask of raven we're doing some calculations by the way mask of raven um, mask of raven knows his math well is there any place where you use units of kilometers over kilograms like in, in torque calculations for um, what do you call it which part are you from UK so we just did a conversion of feet feet pounds feet pounds to kilometers per kilogram so i'm assuming feet pounds is the pressure on the engine for torque engine right feet pounds how many pounds of pressure there are per square foot for a uh, torque engine i guess rotary and is a rotary engine i guess uh, foot is a unit in figuring out horsepower so uh, this is so would, would this be equivalent to horsepowers horsepowers is foot per pounds is that what it is beans i've never come across this i don't think so foot pounds feet per pounds i guess i think i remember this this i don't remember at all no so horsepower is not foot per uh foot per pounds this is the amount of pressure that would be like if you're if you go in the water right if you go deep sea diving or whatever it is submarines you would have to calculate how much pressure there would be how many pounds of pressure there would be per square foot i guess don't know exactly what we were figuring out i don't know either london big life plan is to be out west coast canada in the next few years awesome it's nice here man i like it the metric equivalent of a foot pound is a newton a newton meter newton meter really that's what it is it's a unit of work kilogram kilometers per kilogram is the equivalent of foot pound is a newton meter the metric equivalent of foot pound in is a newton wow this is a newton that's a newton newton is meters oops newton is kilograms per times meters per second squared right kilograms meters per second squared yeah it's kilo it's kilograms times kilometers times kilograms really 
foot pounds is this what so we definitely wouldn't convert to this that doesn't make sense in newton meter so it's a newton meter oh newton times a meter uh, so it'd just be meter squared wouldn't it this guy no the pounds is in the bottom i don't know pound this, this stuff confuses the crap out of me the imperial system just confusing for me in canada we switched from imperial to uh, metric a long time ago dante yeah it doesn't sound right because the weight is in the bottom here but it's in the top there so that doesn't make sense i know newtons is that newton meters would be oops take out the squared so newton's meters would be newton meter would just be that times meters which would be kilogram times meter squared per second squared and meters per second squared is just acceleration it's like a joule right uh, i guess so yeah joule joule is oh i forgot my joules joule is in newton meters is that what it is i forget i wish i was teaching more physics students i wish i had more physics students so i'd be sharper on my physics which i'm not i go through waves when i teach uh with the type of students i get sometimes i get a lot of physics students coming in and we do a lot of physics a lot of cool calculations sometimes a lot of mathematics sometimes <laughs> it's both right so again keep in mind if you're struggling with mathematics struggling with learning physics chemistry any type of sciences or anything in general just keep in mind that if you don't practice it you lose it right a foot pound oh foot pound this is foot per pound so foot pound that's what it is foot pound not foot per pound so we take this off so foot pounds takes you to this guy takes you to this guy this guy takes you to this guy uh, a foot pound is a unit of work the metric equivalent of which is a newton meter measured in joules is foot per pound no it's still per pound what newton meters okay so is that wrong doesn't go to this one joule is is equal energy value of one newton meter okay units oh my god that's one of the by the way just just to let you know it's foot times pound yeah it should be divided by i keep making mistakes damn it oh raven you're throwing me off <laughs> dante's on it capital letters that's the same the same thing you're using for Iowa capital letters yeah I would be too Dante if I wasn't expecting it I, I was expecting it right there a corrupt system is corrupt you can't you can't like fool me once shame on you fool me twice shame on me fool me three times I'm a dingling fool me four times what the hell fool me five times oh, I give up fool me six times what what am I doing here fool me seven times oh let's try it again fool me eight times like how many times fool you how many times until you say I'm out right for me it's once right 2016 done out right mathematics back to mathematics no more politics back to mathematics all right what else should we do what else should we do there's lots of uh, uh what do you call it the whole in my part of the world anyway the whole education system has been shifting a lot in the last five years there's just with in the last 10 years really with access to online and stuff like this there's some school districts that are dropping ridiculous amount of money to buy automated systems for to manage kids and they're cutting back on their education right 
and they're telling kids to have their you know the resources are available online we built this thing to help you right but they they didn't have to spend millions of dollars tens of millions of dollars to build this thing for kids to use because majority of kids don't need that right they need to they need direct interaction direct education right uh direct stimulation uh which is crazy which is crazy but it's actually not just foot pounds it's pound force feet times pound times feet so it's feet squared is that what it is pound it's pound force times force pound man you one thing i i had a hard time with when i was going to when i was in high school is doing that i found very difficult when i was studying chemistry and physics because i didn't understand the systems that they were converting from from this to that from this to that oh dante so it's pound force so pound force is feet times pounds times feet makes no sense if it's pound that's just mass yeah no pound force times feet aka pound force times feet i didn't realize it was something called pound force so pound force pound force times feet oops feet and the abbreviation for it is pound l b f times feet wow i i don't think i've ever seen this before i don't think i've ever dealt with this before and that's the problem a lot of people encounter when studying physics or chemistry for some reason our current education system in my part of the world anyway like for example grade 11 physics they if you grab a grade the imperial system oh my oh my <laughs> the, if you grab a grade 11 book in my part of the world and it, the curriculum in general they try to cover all of these different types of disciplines in physics in one year one course right so kids start off with kinematics right you got here let me give you the lowdown on this they they do kinematics which is basically here let's just write it down kina kinematics and then they do dynamics dynamics and then they do statics okay and then they do um forces um forces and then they do gravitation gravity okay and and the list goes on so each one of these units each one of these disciplines has their own formulas and their own units that you have to calculate and they do energy 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 and momentum momentum right and just continues so you have to learn all of these units without really understanding what they represent and do all these calculations and all these conversions solve all these problems without really understanding what's going on and people say the physics is hard physics is not hard the way they're teaching it makes it difficult right if they want to teach physics properly they should break all these up group some of these things together and teach them in separate years really focus down on them right always start off with kinematics right as soon as you get into quadratics one of the reasons they don't start kinematics until grade 11 is because the math curriculum is so far behind that in my part of the world anyway they don't talk about quadratics until grade 11 right so you can't teach it earlier right if you can teach it earlier start you know forces you don't need quadratics um, you could you you could do statics before you learn quadratics you could do energy to a certain degree right how are you do you like riddles uh, from a complete pack 
from a complete pack we'll read this it looks like math i was scared it might be a trolling factor right from a complete pack a small number of cards has been taken out if you deal among four people three cards remain okay if you deal among three people two cards remain and if you deal among five people two cards remain how many cards are there Ooh, let's lay this out i'm not sure let's check it out so how will we approach this so we don't know the number of cards in the deck let's call it x right that's the number of cards we have uh from a complete pack of small card a number of cards has been taken up from a complete pack a small number of cards has been taken out so you take a whole bunch of cards out if you deal among four people so are you dealing out the what you took out a pack so i'm assuming x is the number of cards the first sentence is just throwing throwing you off if you deal among four people three cards remain so basically if you take x divided by three or four divided by three uh mask of raven does it mask of raven so let's check it out let's see if we can do it so i'm gonna approach it this way i don't know if it's the right way i just like laying it out first the most simplest way i can right if you deal among four people three cards remain so if you divide this by four you're gonna get a number with a remainder of three right if you take this and divide it by uh, three cards remain if you deal uh, among three people two cards remain and if you deal among five people two cards remain so three people you get the number r is equal to two and if you divide it by five you get the number r is two the remainder is two so what's the best way of doing this 47 mask of raven how do we do how did you get it so fast literally I like uh, I like I like reading riddles, thinking about it quickly, and then looking at the answer. That's the way I like doing riddles. I don't really do them; I read them. <laughs> right. So how do we do? What's the best way of doing this? Mask of Raven, direct us. So if we divide it, so basically here, if you say the remainder is three, so this would be three over four. This would be two over three and this would be two over five right whatever the number is he's right 47 well the number is an equation is a multiple of 15 minus 2 notice that first the number in the equation is 15 minus 2 is it Plus two, rather. Notice the first. Og. <laughs> Mask of Raven. <laughs> so, let me see. Uh, well, the number in question is a multiple of 15 plus two. Is a multiple of 15 plus two. Oh, because of these guys. Right? Because there's two there. Cool. Multiple of 15 plus 2, and then how do you deal with that? So it's a multiple of 4 plus 3. Ah, that's a cool way of approaching it. I don't have a riddle mind. I don't... Uh, it takes a certain mindset to do riddles. So basically what it is here is to get x... Well, here, let's do it this way. Let me erase this. Uh, x, right? If we multiply everything by five here, you're gonna get X is equal to box, oops, five times box plus two. This is the remainder theorem, by the way, when it comes to polynomials. If you know uh, your division, polynomial long division, actually it's just long division. It's, um, what do you call it? Uh, it's just a remainder theorem, right? This one, would be x is equal to 3 box plus 2 and this one would be x is equal to 4 box plus 3 
if I did that correctly I use my modular arithmetic I use modular arithmetic here but the way you're doing is a good intuitive way to think about it also uh, my chat got deleted can someone post a question again yeah I didn't see your question here let me grab it here's the question so uh, prime liter liter prime uh, posted the question from a complete pack of oh thank you for posting it uh, little little try oops that's okay so so far I've gone to here how would we go from here to 47 how would we go from here to 47 we could subtract the equations we have three equations we got two unknowns we should be able to do this right or wait a second these are different these are different this is let's call this y z w right so right now we got four unknowns and three equations we need one more equation to be able to solve this as far as i see it right because we don't know what the numbers are here right these boxes are different let's call these uh, yzw that's what we're calling it okay or I'm calling it yzw yzw oops then this is I wrote this backwards so this would be w z y just to confuse you guys I flipped it <laughs> so is there any other relationship we have that we can figure out because we've got four unknowns three equations in mathematics if you have four unknowns you need four equations to solve it says five blank plus two and three blank is two plus two are both plus two you can combine them in one equation 15 but the blanks are different z and y would be different mask of raven wouldn't it it would have to be no then the number of equations is reduced but the z and the w are different numbers wait a second five blank plus two and three blank plus two are both plus two you can combine them in one equation 15 blank plus two so you're multiplying them two times two cards remain combine those two guys so are you multiplying them I don't follow the logic there so three times five is 15 sure like if we multiply these then the blank becomes WZ right W times Z but then that becomes four so I don't understand why three blank plus two and plus two are both plus two you can combine them in one equation 15 blank I don't see it to tell you the truth I don't see it I mean the only way you would get 15 if you multiply those guys and if you multiply this you got an x squared and that one you got but you can't just multiply these guys it doesn't make sense unless you foil it out well you don't want to foil it out no I don't see it well riddle me this riddle me that Chicho doesn't know the answer what would uh, what did mask of raven do to figure it out you did modular uh i use modular arithmetic i don't know what modular arithmetic is modular arithmetic nice question it's got to be a way around this D 
these guys. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. If someone does know where to go from here, our Discord page would be awesome to post it up, right? To see where it takes us. I don't get it either. I don't get it either, Dante. I don't know how you would combine them to get 15. Um... I mean, we could subtract them, get rid of the, the axis and those guys. Oh, the relationship we could have would be this. If you just subtract equation one and two, let's see what where that takes us. X is equal to five W plus two, and X is equal to three Z plus two. Subtract this from this, right? So equation one and equation two, subtract them. So this kills this, this becomes zero. This becomes five W minus, oops, three Z. Minus three Z and the two kills the two. So we have this relationship. How is that gonna help us? I don't know if it is, right? So five W is equal to three Z. Did you try that too, Dante? <laughs> Modular arithmetic is using remainder, but I don't know how that's relevant. Oh, is that what it is? So that's exactly what we're doing. So over here, here, let me erase, give us some more room here. So over here, we would just have uh, 3z is equal to 5w, right? But that's just combining these guys. We need an original equation. Hi, been lurking. But imagine you take those two remainder cards away and you get a number of cards divisible by both three. Oh, so therefore 15 also. Not sure if that's helpful. That is helpful, Mr. Because what it is, oh, that's of course. We can't just think of it as a standalone thing right are you laughing at <laughs> is, that, is that what it is if and of course of course didn't even think about it right crazy if in both scenarios two cards remain the amount we look for must be a multiple of three and it must be a multiple of five so it must be a multiple of 15 as well that's right crazy eh? i can't believe we didn't think about it so if you zap this out then they must be this so if it's a multiple of 15 so there's got to be two remainders so x is equal to 15 blank plus two So how did you get 47 then? So the blank is 3, 40, 45 plus 2. But how do we how do we narrow it down to 47? Right? How do we narrow it down to 47? How do we narrow it down to 47? It's a small amount of cars that I took out. Oh, from a 52 deck. Is that what it is? All good with you, bro. Hey, Nicholas, how are you doing? Justin for Yeah, all good, brother. Thank you very much. By the way, Nicholas, check this out. My snack. One of my snacks for today. Cuckoo and avocados. Cuckoo and avocados. Right? Super delicious. I made the cuckoo like two days ago so this is the third day i'm just eating as snacks very good this combination is fantastic as well so there's only three options that's right we narrow it down it's by elimination it's by elimination because if it's got to be divisible by three multiple of 15 the only choices is there's either 15 cards 30 cards or 45 cards right so 
if it was 15 cards and there's two cards remaining, so that's 17, if you divide 17 by four, you get a one remainder. So it's not a three remainder. If it's 30, you add two, that's 32. 32 divided by four is straight up eight, so there is no remainder. If it's 45 plus two is 47, 40, oops, 47 divided by four is da, 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 11 and three over four. That's the three we want, so it's gotta be 47. So it's by elimination. That's the riddle part, right? You have to eliminate. Great question. And great collaboration trying to solve it. Awesome. Now that's a snack. Now that's a snack, Nicholas. You should try lemon juice and pepper on your avocado. Oh yeah, lemon juice, yeah. Right now I'm staying away from pepper, so no peppers, but lemon juice for sure. And if lemon juice would go, uh, what do you call it? amazing with the cuckoos as well. Chad is amazing. Little try for sure. We got a nice group of people here, man. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to everyone in the chat. It's fantastic. Don't make hung don't make hungry guys. <laughs> Look, this is a great question. That was a great question. Why are we wearing a wearing a toque? Uh I'm staying warm. Also, no bell peppers. Bell peppers. Uh the red ones are okay. I like I don't mind eating the red ones and the yellow ones are okay. The green ones hard in the tummy. All right. This was a great question. This was a great question. And I like doing the remainder theorem laying on it like this because you get a visual sort of it's just ratios fra fractions glad i could help you entertain us for sure and you guys too and educate we're learning right fantastic there's nothing better in life really well there are a few things that are really awesome but one of the great things in life is learning while being entertained like and munching on cuckoo and avocado <laughs> a great question great question I liked it I couldn't do the jump uh, straight to this it didn't make sense to me but it had to be a multiple of 15 with the two yeah it made sense the variables threw me off we have three equations and then you the the way you solve it without the fourth equation there's only three choices and you reference I'm going to show this to my students tomorrow awesome mr uh, mr moss yeah for sure great question great question and you don't need high level mathematics really you need to know long division uh remainder theorem would be good that's sort of grade 11 in my part of the world um, so you would have to explain the remainder theorem to people to say that you can lay out the problem like this right fantastic question nice very good and Nicholas I got a little halva as well a little sweetness halva tahini and uh, sesame seeds and uh, a sugar I need the sugar fun I like these math streams math dreams what did we do today this week we did politics or current events relationships mathematics tomorrow coronavirus we're gonna look at the mathematics the growth rate of the coronavirus and the data I'm grabbing some of the stuff from is from this uh, this website here. Let me give you the link for it. Uh, I've started tabulating some stuff. Hopefully the link works. Um, sometimes I have to refresh it to get the data for the coronavirus um, and rig it, sort of go to the original source, the original website, and then 
refresh and do a couple of clicks and get it back up again. On the plus side with the coronavirus, the, the graph is going linear, right? So hopefully what we're going to see with the, uh, another math riddle, what did 20 do when he got hungry? What did 20 do when he got hungry? He ate one working for me. Working for you, awesome. What did 20 do when he got hungry? I don't know. <laughs> what did 20 do when he got hungry? 28. Uh, 20. <laughs> you could do that for all the tens. What did 30 do when he got hungry? 38. You could follow it up with another question. I gotta remember this. <laughs> I gotta remember this. We use it on my some of my students to get a kick out of it So we graphed a coronavirus before right and we had a graph like this going exponential and we Extrapolated saying if it was growing exponentially if it continued growing exponentially it was gonna be insane. It is still insane Well, I heard seven eight nine seven eight, nine. <laughs> So, But what we started getting was it went exponential, but now it's sort of linear and hopefully we're going to see it start rolling over into an s s curve right s shape we don't know yet uh we've got two more days of data I, i'll try to get the data for thursday as well i'm not sure if we'll have it for thursday but we should be able to get i should be able to get two more days of data in there that's two more extra points that we can graph okay and hopefully that's what we'd like to see cases outside of uh china are actually doing this now right but we don't we don't know yet only place i'm worried about regarding india and bangladesh india india is the one dante because they couldn't have no no uh india is is the key i agree with you right there's only so far three three that we know but like really uh, once it goes in india if it uh expands there they neither have the well they do they would have to but if there are vaccines available and stuff like this they would have to start on mass uh, but hopefully it doesn't hopefully it doesn't but i'm not uh, too optimistic that it's not going to grow uh, we might get a linear and then like this just on that note on exponential i'm not sure if anybody's following the markets but we have one of the greatest short squeezes in stock market history in the last month okay one of the greatest short squeezes in stock market history occurred in the last really two to three weeks right and that was with tesla stock right so tesla for a while if we do a timeline whatever the graph was doing this it went up to 300 and it collapsed down to 17 100 170 dollars right and it stabilized it wasn't going down anymore right eight years ago it was at 25 dollars right so we're not mapping that so let's assume this is our 170 dollar mark here right and then it started going up started going up this is what you see in the markets where you get a short squeeze and a short squeeze is people who are betting that a stock is going to go down and the stock goes up and keeps on going up and they basically get margin calls or they start covering their shorts because they're losing too much money start stock started going up started going up started going up started going up and went like this All right hit almost a thousand dollars almost a thousand dollars right the time frame we're talking about here it was like five months ago or so but basically from here is the key right because this is going exponential and this was in the last couple of months two months two to three months two to three months right this movement here was in last like a week right that went from like 500 to a thousand right hit a nine hundred and eighty dollars 
like yesterday and today it dropped 160 bucks or something 150 bucks so it did this okay so those people who were shorting it up got really burnt and this is basically it went exponential on a log semi log scale right and once it does that I don't want to say guarantee this is not financial advice this is not trading advice this is nothing I don't play this game no more right but once something goes exponential on a semi log graph it's a pretty safe bet to say it's safe to short it right uh, not 100% safe because I when this was 750 I told people I wouldn't be long on it I wouldn't be short on it right so this part was one amazing short squeeze hello I'm back I love spider-man how are you doing how's life <laughs> welcome back you took off you took off doing a math riddle man we had two of them what did what did uh, what did 20 do when 20 got hungry let's do some math I love spider-man what did 20 do when 20 got hungry and 30 did the same thing and 40 did the same thing and 50 did the same thing they all did the same thing what did they do <laughs> my stomach is growling what did chicho do when chicho got hungry <laughs> what do you do when you get hungry and then the other one was cards hmm i'm not sure 28 and then 38 and then 48 58 68 78 and chicho 8 <laughs> can we create a horse racing problem they ate <laughs> what did they do they ate yeah horse racing problem have you guys ever played a horse racing game i'm reading a book about anti-gravity anti-gravity that's cool <laughs> it's impossible to put down really uh, I know that I've read some uh, theories that anti-gravity has been around for a while right since World War two if not pre World War two that jokes from <laughs> funny oh yeah a uh, little try you can't post links on our chat just because when we started getting on twitch we had a lot of trolls come in like all other people so we didn't want any clickbaits but we do have a discord page here discord discord and we have a folder for heavy books and light books uh, I think I call it switch the name call them books light books heavy um, please post a link there um, and we'll check into it we have a lot of people on our discord and pop in here that uh, we do enjoy our books right and I do have a book book reading club playlist on my YouTube channel sort of a book club I guess I think I called it a book club uh, where we read some books and talk about some books uh, but anti-gravity is cool <laughs> I looked into some of it in the past uh, Tesla is uh, I don't know if it was Tesla related it was something else related I can't remember what it was uh, but have you guys there's a there's a racing game horse racing game that you can play right if you have a deck of cards okay and this this you can do and like uh what do you call that uh you can do it with friends and family and stuff like this right uh, lay down the cards right so make a track so take cards lay them down make whatever track you want right so all these are just cards right and face them down right here's a riddle let's check it out suppose you walk past a barber shop one day and see a sign that says uh, do you shave yourself if not please come in and I'll shave you I shave anyone who does not shave himself and no one else so the question is who shaves the barber himself uh she's a uh, so this has got to be a gender thing because you said himself so 
it must be a female thing happening more interest in the factors that contributed to when a horse enters the turning part of the track more interested in the factors that contribute to when a horse enters the turning part of the track oh let's check it out um so that would be more what do you call it i forget what terminology is but the force is going down on an angle so there's got to be some horses i know there's some horses that are way more faster than others around the track a little bit of horse betting uh, the barber doesn't exist the barber doesn't exist really do you shave yourself if not please come in and i'll shave you i have i shave anyone who does not shave himself and no one else who shaves the barber maybe the barber doesn't shave who says the barber shaves the barber doesn't shave and that's my final answer but it's just a sign that says that right it's a paradox answering this question results in the contradiction the barber cannot shave himself as he only shaves those who do not shave themselves ah okay thus if he shaves himself he ceases to be the barber conversely if the barber does not shave himself then he fits into the group of people who would be shaved by the barber and thus as the barber he must shave himself ah sure okay or doesn't shave at all if i was a barber i don't think i'd shave i'd grow a gigantic beard though let me just uh, finish this off so you lay down the cars make a horse track or whatever it is and then take the aces right so you can play with any number of people if you're it's a family game right so take the aces if you're four people and each one is a different suit ace and then you have the cards and you start flipping cards right so if the two if five of spades i don't know how to draw spades here's spades if the five of spades shows up then the the person with the spade moves five spots so in general you only really want to play with four people right so one two three four five so the spade goes to here and then you flip again and if you know three of diamonds shows up the diamond goes three spots you flip again if a seven of spades shows up then the spade goes up seven right and that's the game very simple fun to play with family being female <laughs> roll them <laughs> rattle uh rod red red oh i like chicho's answer about barber being female never trust the bald barber <laughs> sometimes they're the best haha <laughs> sorry to interrupt about the barber i thought you would find it interesting yeah fun fun spider-man um as far as the horse going around the track uh, i would assume the the smaller horses would be in a at an advantage like for example arabian stallions they're small sleek fast right i have the simple equation uh, anybody that comes up with a simple equation usually it's pretty difficult <laughs> my username frank a to the power of n plus b to the power of n equals c to the power of n how to prove that there are no positive integers for a b and c that satisfies the equation for n greater than 2 and that's the kicker n has to be greater than 2 because if n is 2 then we're into the Pythagorean theorem if it's a triangle right a squared plus b squared equals c squared uh, I don't think that's a simple question I'm pretty sure that's on somebody's website that gives you rewards for giving proofs of these things right mask of Raven would know this mask of Raven would know this everything about math, math is uh, is very nice on topic yeah yeah just kidding <laughs> funny funny i swear there's got to be so many people here or not you guys but on twitch that are taking high school mathematics and are struggling with high school mathematics and they just don't know that they can get help all right hilarious 
Nuft Nuftir. I don't know what that is. Blam. By the way, gang, uh, thank you for the follows. Thank you for the subs. If I've missed any subs uh, and the follows, for sure. Um, I sort of read the chat, look at the math, and look away and get distracted. So I had once an occasion which I step, stepped on. I had once an occursion which I stepped on, like two numbers. These get natural numbers. I'm not sure what that means. Differentiation and integration walk into a bar. A fight ensues immediately. They both cancel each other out. <laughs> Bamboo. Can you find a set of three different numbers for this? Uh, one of them would be two, right? Two plus two plus two equals two times two times two. I can find one set. What else? Uh, ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Zero. So there's three set, uh, three, two numbers. So it would work for uh, if it, they're all zero, if they're all two. One, two, three. One, two, three. And you could do it for one, two, three. One plus two plus three is six. One times two times three is six. Sure, we just did, right? Oh, that's right, two, two, two is six, oops. <laughs> so zero works, one, two, three works. Right. They shall be different. Others get periodical results when taking, raising number like, divided with a prime number the n greater than two proof referenced above i'm pretty sure that's fermat's last theorem good luck proving it <laughs> yeah i think we've had that that question pop up before that's why i recognized it right uh, the other question a a plus b plus c equals a oh, a times b times c so zero works, so zero plus zero plus zero equals zero times zero times zero. One, two, three works, one times two times three. I said two, 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 but two, two, two doesn't work. My mistake, so that's three, two we found. He <laughs> he, read a book about Fermat. And there's an amazing uh, documentary about Fermat's last theorem, it's really good. Oh, A, B, C do not equal each other. Oh, different numbers. I missed the different numbers. So zero, zero, zero doesn't work. So one, two, three works, right? The other one, uh, someone said zero, negative one, and one. Yeah, zero, negative one, and one. Cool. Zero minus one plus one is zero. Zero times negative one times one is zero. What else? You know what you could you could find an infinite number based on this uh could you yeah you could find an infinite number based on this zero minus n plus n because this would be negative n plus negative n minus n equals zero times negative n times n so there's your infinite set Does zero over zero equal one because same number? No, zero doesn't work that way. Chicho, do you have any studying tips on how to remember transformation rules better? No, J JJ, the best way to remember that stuff is just to keep on doing, just to keep on doing, right? You just have to practice. And for n greater than, oh, n greater than two miss that part as well poop right oh no this wasn't for n greater than two that was the uh fermat's last theorem one what is the smallest whole number that is equal to seven times the sum of its digits Oof. i don't know or n greater than zero it seems they are getting you to do their math homework 
<laughs> if these are riddles math homework you guys are gonna fail if you're trying to get chicha to do your riddle math homeworks i'm brutal at, at these types of riddles i miss words and questions right like i didn't it didn't register to me that the numbers have to be different right andrew wiles through fermat's last theorem about 20 years ago it took him about 10 years of work we can give it a try if <laughs> it's going to be a long stream <laughs> <laughs> and the, the, seriously the documentary on Fermat's last theorem is amazing one of my favorite math documentaries never mind I asked Wolfram Alpha uh, can solve it uh, solve it for C Wolfram Alpha is good I, I use Wolf Wolf Ram Alpha uh, somewhat uh, for stuff right it's fun it's a, it's a good website actually it's a very good website um, it, you know what one thing i don't like about it is it's not open source and they put a copyright claim on stuff that you do or you, they used to anyway so if you use their website to do data analysis and you use their methods in anything you publish they put a copy i think so the technical stuff i read imagine you have nine balls I wouldn't be able to walk. <laughs> and one is a little heavier. Oh man, I'm in trouble. I gotta go to the doctor. <laughs> you have a, sorry, I have to say it. You have a beam scale and are allowed to are allowed to wait three times to find the heavier ball. Ah, oh, let's check this out. Let's read the other one too the two digit a b oh we got a couple of riddles going on oh my god i love spider-man math is fun math is fun hey quick question serious medical <laughs> right there. imagine you have nine balls and one is a little heavier so you got nine balls let's do it one two three four five six seven eight nine right i love spider-man we'll read your thing after this one can you explain all of calculus to me sure calculus is the introduction of time into mathematics so it's the rate of change so going into calculus if you're studying calculus just think of it as time rate of change and the only absolute in life is change so calculus is pretty damn important right a little heavier you have a beam scale and are allowed to wait three times to find the heavier ball what would you do so we have a scale we got three three times we could weigh things what would you do and we got nine balls total i mean the ideal thing would be you would break it in what would i do i would do this let's see if this is going to work i would weigh five balls in one four balls in another right and you would calculate per unit ratio so you would weigh this you put five balls here would that work and then divide whatever you get by five put four balls here but three times doesn't work and you get this number right if this is bigger than that you know your big balls in here and then what do you got to do if you had if you if you could do it four times you could do this easy break this in half again weigh them and then you know you can do the next one and you're done right like a seesaw move them around oh like a seesaw so it's like this oh my bad so that one we could do with four weigh-ins pretty sure when does calculus turn to physics mm. mathematics is just the language base language of everything it's a beam beam scale that's not what you call them so we got this guy 
So we got nine balls. So what are we going to do? Nine balls. So what would we do? Do we have to have all nine balls on the beam scale at the same time? We have a left and a right side of that scale. How is that scale? How is that? Uh, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. Just pit it. So you can't, you have to weigh all the balls at the same time. So, so you can't take eight balls and put them. Always count two of them. Just pit it up and weigh the heavier half each time. You're free to do what you want. You're free to do what you want. So I would put four balls here, four balls here, right? If this thing is level, whatever ball that was left out is your big ball. <laughs> I'm just cracking up saying that, right? Twice you get the answer until you have the last. So you weigh it once, four here, four here. I'm just uh, exercise like I don't know if this is the answer so if these are totally level then that one is the ball you're looking for if this tilts then obviously the heavier one is going to be on the side where it's tilting down right so if this thing goes down this way you eliminate these guys then you put two here oops two here and two here if this one tilts then you put one here one here whichever one tilts is the big ball right uh, twice you got the answer until you have the last two same solution best case check cool cool you can just add two balls uh, evenly and when it tilts you know you know that seems like cheating hmm that's true Dante you could do that too two balls here two balls here if it tilts then one of them is the heavier contains the heavier so you could actually theoretically do it in two measurements this one if you're lucky you could do it in one on the first go you just put one ball on either side if they weigh the same you discard them repeat three the, the kicker is uh, so one ball once twice you could only do it three times you you could only weigh three times right because if it would be multiple measurements so to speak okay i got it wrong you're allowed to wait two times only now <laughs> you're allowed to hey you're changing the rules of the game <laughs> no i mean you can start with one each and keep adding uh, but that should count as multiple measurements yeah that would that would count as multiple measurements that's what i would think too right so if you added those guys if it stays level then you gotta add more you add those ones keep track of what you're adding if it stays level you gotta add more but that's already past the two measurements right I swear there's a similar problem about weighing 13 people with uh with identifying one person being heavier yeah i mean to use two on one side and don't need four uh, on start so if you use two if they're heavy one is heavier you got them the second one if you use two one is not heavier how would you do it with two ways i don't know how you would do it with two ways split the ball into three groups you chose three groups oh Oh, split the ball into three groups. That's not a bad idea. Let's check it out. But then how do you isolate the one that's the heaviest one? Oh, because it's three. So, so split them into three, right? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Take this one and that one, put them here. All right? If it stays level then you know the heavy one is in this one right if it tilts discard this one and then take two of these guys put them here 
the one that tilts is the heavy ball if it stays level is this guy great break him into threes nice zoot awesome right oh logic takes place yeah break him into threes awesome that's better with the other way if you're lucky you get it in one way in victory victory awesome that was great what was uh spider-man's uh, little riddle doop, doop. spider-man's riddle or spider-man's question let's check it out oh, i love spider-man what have we got let's check it out the two digit number a b stands for 10 a plus b since the first digit represents tens and the second represents units Ooh, i'm already confused if 10a plus b equals 7a plus b then 10a plus b equals 7a 7b and if 3a equals 6b or or more simply a plus, that is the second digit must be twice the first the smallest such number is 21. I'm just going to write down the equations. That's what makes sense to me. 10a plus b. 10a plus b is equal to 7a plus b. Right? You got that one. 3a. Actually, the other equation is uh, a equals a equals 2b. That's your first equation. That's your second equation. You got two equations, two unknowns. You can solve for this easy. Right? Think so anyway winner winner chicken dinner yeah winner winner chicken dinner so all you would do for this is just substitute here we already got this a is equal to b to b just sub it in there but this is just going to be equal to zero should be so 10 times 2b plus b i i don't think this is a solving problem this is just so this is three three b times seven is 21b this is going to be 20 so 21b so 21 equals 21b so i guess the answer is 21. is that what we're doing yeah substitution i really love doing just explaining to people students anyway to solve for one unknown you need one equation to solve for two unknowns you need two equations three unknowns three equations once that kicks in uh if b does not equal one but b was the units i think right something along that uh, 10 a plus b since the first digit represents tens and the second represents you oh units you mean the first uh, single digits cool cool that sort of makes sense serious riddles the answer must be 42 if b equals one i misspelled so what do you teach i teach math math and physics lots of math not too much riddles i'm not good at riddles i'm more of a it's it's weird i i, I like problem solving but riddles trip me up because of the wording i think how good are you at uh, finite math business math business math uh we have a playlist quantum paradoxes <laughs> quantum paradoxes <laughs> too funny we have a if you go to my youtube channel we have a section on uh, personal finance i have a personal finance playlist I don't know if I'm good at business math. I just have experience and investing and playing the markets and understanding our economic political system. My own, I had long times uh, on calculating at the station for nearly one hour, several times. The answer is always 42. <laughs> Says he can, it, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, supercomputer, the size of the planet, I calculated for millions of years. I think he needs to upgrade. He needs to go up in order, magnitude. I think Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the next version, I think uh, 
the answer will always be 420. What is the smallest number that increases by 12 when it is flipped and turned upside down? Flipped and turned upside down. Oh, riddle, riddle. I tried raising four digit, <laughs> digit numbers divided by primes, which result in the periodic, periodical result. Technical analysis. Technical, I, I used to do some, uh, what do you call it, uh, technicals on markets. Yeah, for sure. I was trading, right? Uh, it's uh, rudimentary stuff, simple stuff, but it's basically ratios, right? Ch -ch -ch and draw lines and break out, not break out. Look at the short number, short squeeze, all you know, all that jazz, right? A barber's job is to shave every man in town who doesn't shave himself. Does the barber shave himself? <laughs> Wait a second. This was the same riddle as was posted earlier. My my answer was the the barber is uh, not a man, not male. That's what I told peeps an hour ago too. Yeah, yeah, lurker. I think lurker. You're the one that uh, brought out the same riddle, the same question, right? I may refer to that and that, which is forty-two, possibly trolling. Trolling. <laughs> what does determining why women don't like man mean? I don't know. Be nice to people. If you're nice to people, you'll come across people that don't like you, no matter how nice you are. But overall, people will like you if you're nice to them. Want the answer? You should sure, Spider-Man, what's the answer? 21. I thought we did that. No, wait a second. You posted another one. What is it? Oh, yeah, yeah. The smallest one when you flip it. Sure. Spider-Man, what is it? Let me read it again. What is the smallest number that increased by 12 when it is flipped and turned upside down? What? What is the smallest number that increased by 12 when it is flipped? And turned upside down. Mirror, mirror. I don't know. Spider-Man, what's the answer? Very good. All right, Chicho. I'm gonna head out and do some homework. I'll join back if you're still streaming when I finish. Yeah, we're gonna be probably quitting in uh, pretty soon. JJ, thank you for popping by. Hope you have a fantastic day and happy homeworking life advice with chicho <laughs> advice with chicho the answer is 86 ah when it is turned upside down and flipped it becomes 98 which is 12 more than 86 cool cool i gotta remember these riddles and put them down write them down somewhere maybe at some point when i'm doing a bill hicks breaks i rewatch these things and i'll make notes take my own notes fun should we call the stream gang should we call the stream we're almost coming up to two hours and uh, my voice is holding out which is good I've been fighting the flu had to cough and stuff so I wasn't putting multiple streams together just doing two at a time I feel lost in mass somehow sometimes me too everybody does man everybody does look into a documentary called uh, forbidden knowledge i think it's called it's about a mathematician making a documentary in honor of his three favorite mathematicians right and the documentary it that's my favorite document well it's in my top five math favorite documentaries right or top one of top 10 documentaries of all time right it's a documentary about his three most favorite mathematicians and these are like huge mathematicians guru and this and this and this right and all three of them went crazy trying to understand infinity right one of them killed himself one of them uh went into an insane asylum and the other one i think killed himself too or something like this right so uh i feel lost in math some somehow sometimes you're not alone you're not alone you actually have a seat with some of the greatest mathematicians in the world no professional i like fractals did some explaining and programming for it nice uh username frank uh no links in chat only on discord fractals are awesome 
fractals fractals are beautiful are beautiful right okay gang let's call the stream let's call the stream thank you for being here thank you for all the questions thank you for the riddles thank you for the answers thank you for the collaboration we solved a really hard one that was super cool wish you a very good night you as well you as well i hope you guys have a fantastic evening fantastic day uh fantastic morning right and um, if you can make it uh, tomorrow night 8 30 p.m uh, pacific time my time uh, we're going to do a math stream regarding the coronavirus specifically we're going to start off by looking at the numbers and looking at some charts and graphs just to you know reduce the hysteria on the world but really look at the numbers to see what we know so far from what's been released to get an idea of what's happening right and then we'll see where the conversation takes us okay good stream she show full of malls and barbers base riddles i'm gonna i'm gonna call it a night hope the flu gets better man i me too it's lasting forever never had it last this long uh but it's good i'm functioning at around 70 75 percent improving that's just good which is good okay take care everyone i hope you guys have a fantastic fantastic day and i'll see you guys tomorrow if you can make it bye for now